Hossein Khazro Vaziri, better known to wrestling fans, the Iron Sheik passed away, 81 years old. His official Twitter account revealed the news on Wednesday. It says, remembering the Iron Sheik today, we gather with heavy hearts to bid farewell to a true legend, force of nature, iconic figure who left an incredible mark on the world of pro wrestling. It was with great sadness we share the news of the passing of the Iron Sheik, but we also take solace in knowing that he departed this world peacefully, leaving behind a legacy that will endure for generations to come. Beyond the wrestling persona, the world knew so well. The Iron Sheik was a devoted family man, cherished the love and support of his wife of 47 years. Carol stood by his side through thick and thin, offering unwavering encouragement throughout his life. Their bond was an anchor, providing him with the strength to face the challenges life presented. His children, Tanya, Nikki, Marissa, his son-in-law, Eddie, he was not just a wrestling icon. He was a loving and dedicated father, instilled in them the values of perseverance, determination, the importance of following their dreams. The Iron Sheik's guidance and unwavering belief in their potential served as a driving force for his children, empowering them to become better visions of themselves. Then we've got a bunch of notes here on his, his career. Of course, he ended the 1,470-day reign of Bob Backlund, beat him for the belt December 26, 1983, which was, of course, uh, to set up the win by Hulk Hogan 28 days later as Hogan won the title, kicked off Hulkamania. He had a WWF Tag Team title run, the first WrestleMania. He had that biography, The Sheik. Uh, of course, like 15 years ago or so, he did that podcast, which uh, literally, I mean, after that podcast came out where he just was ranting and raving, I mean, he got like a probably a straight decade of bookings off that podcast. And uh, yeah, I remember just very quickly, you know, I, I started watching wrestling uh, regularly in like 88, 89. And so, you know, I had not, I did not see a lot of the Iron Sheik. You know, he would make appearances here and there. And then he had that, uh, they, were, they had the famous, I think it was the 2000 or 2001 WrestleMania when they had the Legends Battle Royal. 17. 17. And they, of course, they, they announced all of these legends. And uh, I predicted that the Legends Battle Royal would be won by the Iron Sheik. Because so did my wife. I saw the list of all of the legends, and I was like, there's one guy who they ain't going to be able to get over that top rope, and that's the Iron Sheik. And in fact, that is exactly what happened. And it's really amazing when you think about all of the the issues, uh, the substance abuse issues and everything else that the Iron Sheik had, and the fact that, you know, it was like 25 years ago. It was like, this guy ain't going to be able to get out of a, a, a battle royal. And then, you know... He just continued on, and he lived through 2023, 81 years old. I mean, it's it's really incredible when you think about it. And uh, anyway, the point of when I first saw The Sheik was, years later I went back and I was watching, uh, somebody had sent a tape or something, and it was a tape from Portland Wrestling. And uh, this would have been from uh, probably the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, the Iron Sheik was in this match. And the heat for this match was, like, impossible. And the Iron Sheik was so lean and so mobile. And I just watched this guy and I went, my God, look at this guy. When he was young, he was absolutely incredible. And, of course, you know, a lot of amateur wrestling and a lot of pro wrestling and a lot of living in the 80s and 90s. I mean, it takes a toll on a guy. But, like, if, if your first memories of the Iron Sheik were, like, that battle royal where they couldn't even get the guy out of the ring, you got to go back and watch some some vintage, as Michael Cole would say, vintage Iron Sheik because uh, he was an incredible, incredible athlete. But Lance is joining us here today on the show. And, Lance, you uh, you've met the Iron Sheik? Yeah, memories. but, but I, I want to mention the, there was a documentary, I think it was out on iTunes originally. 2014, the documentary came out. And it's phenomenal. And when you realize all the things this man did, you know, being a bodyguard for the Shah of Iran, you know, competing for the Iranian Olympic team, 
uh, in amateur wrestling. It's like he was he was a badass dude. And 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 really, especially when he had hair, you know, as a young man, a real handsome man at that. Um, but yeah, I I like you first saw him in wrestling when he was tagging with uh, Sheik. Uh, sorry, tagging with Volkov, Sheik and Volkov, managed by Slick. Um, that was sort of my first experience him as a fan. But I met him at a local show here, uh, just an independent PWA show. And I chatted with him for a while. He was, I think he was in a wheelchair, but he could still stand and walk, just not a lot, because the photo I have of him were standing. But um, yeah, I remember him showing me his knee. He'd pull his pant leg up and sitting in the chair with his knee bent at 90 degrees, he could grab his calf and basically just move his whole bottom leg forward like an inch or more. And it's just like, what? Oh, yeah, like it almost like it wasn't attached and just the muscles were holding it. He could slide the bottom part of his leg forward like his knee was not like his, his shin is his tibia yeah his tibula. Shin, the lower half of his leg at the 90 degrees could just like you're pulling the leg out from underneath the table it was weird god but um yeah the the, the you mentioned the the 17 battle royal my wife had the same logic but i checked uh, with someone this morning and unfo it's unfortunate but i guess that was his penultimate match he had one other independent match, a handicap match, where he probably didn't do anything um, after that. But it's a shame his final pro wrestling match wasn't a win at WrestleMania 17. Well, for all of us that don't know about that match, that was his final match. was a win at WrestleMania 17. And uh, I, was, I was alerted uh, by somebody that... You know, shortly after that interview came out with the Iron Sheik, which was full of stuff that we cannot say here on the show, we uh, we had his uh, his his manager Dan Marotti on Figure Four Daily. So if you're a subscriber, it's in the archives right now. And uh, uh, DJ has found the exact date. It is March 27, 2006. So if you uh, go into our archives, uh, it's Figure Four Daily, March 7, 2006. And he writes here, one of the funniest things I have ever heard. I only very vaguely remember this this interview, but uh, you can go back and check it out right now. And uh, for those asking, I just want to throw this out there since people have asked. If you go into our website and you go into the, uh, the podcast archive, people are like, well, how do I find what I want? Well, there's a list of all of the shows. And at the very bottom, the last thing on the list is podcast archive. And if you click that, you can actually be taken to archive.f4wonline.com, and it is it is searchable. So uh, you can go down here, 2000. Actually, first you go to uh, Figure Four Daily, and then you hit uh, 2006, and then you hit the month, and it's very easy to find. So March 27, 2006, Dan Marotti talking about the Iron Is sheet. there still a link anywhere to all of the song drops you used to play on the show? I don't that uh, featured have them, the no. Iron Sheik. Yeah. The I won't mention the drop used in it, but his version of the Monster Mash is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's and I have that somewhere cuz we play words it. we can't use on this show. Yeah, times but... have changed in the last 20 years. I don't know if you're aware of that or not everybody. Yes. But uh, many chic drops from from the old shows were were highlights of mine, and I used to um, his run on the Howard Stern show was also during the the only time that I was actually a Stern listener. I had Sirius Radio for a while, so I used to listen to Chic on Howard Stern a lot, and those drops always brought me joy. So uh, respect the legend, uh, R.I.P. the Iron Chic. Cameraman Zoom. You can also find me at Vincent Verhai on Cameo. Oh my God. I will send you a happy birthday wish. <laughs> I will send you a happy anniversary wish. Granny, you ever thought about being on Cameo? What is it? My computer, my front page is uh, Microsoft. And I go through there and see all kinds of lies and stuff like that. And here you are, you're doing a commercial. And then you had me on there. When I was ranting about WrestleMania, did you get my permission? Oh, okay. Wait, wait, <laughs> what? Just, just stop You're... for a second. Your front page is Microsoft. I guess. I don't even know what that means, your front page is Microsoft. What do you mean you go through there and see all the lies? What does that mean? Well, they have a whole bunch of stuff, you know, about this and that and this and that, you know, all kinds like of news. Like the news? News? I don't post the videos. I don't edit the videos. 
If you saw some video or some commercial, I have no idea what it is or where it came from or who edited it together. I'm sure it was someone from the site. It's not no, Tony, it's not and it's not Dave, and it's not me. And it's not Vinny who's busy doing cameos. That's right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.